Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to speak about a very interesting topic which is CRISPR system. So this time I'm uploading two videos, part one and part two. I'm going to speak about the CRISPR system in general and the CRISPR-Cas9 uh, gene engineering technique. Uh, I hope you will uh, enjoy these two videos. Let's first start, start talking about what is CRISPR system. CRISPR system was first uh, found in bacterial cells or in prokaryotic cells. Uh, CRISPR system is like a type of immune system in these bacterial or prokaryotic cells. So it's a region on the bacterial genome. Let's go, let's go to see what is it exactly. CRISPR, so this is called the CRISPR locus. CRISPR locus from its name is clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats. What does that mean? So the CRISPR locus is a repeat of, of DNA. So like this, it, this sequence is, exa is exactly like this, is exactly like this. These repeats are first of all short and second they are palindromic. And what palindromic means is that if you read them from left to right or from right to left, you end up with the same sequence. And they are repeat, inter regularly interspaced. It means that they there are spacer DNA between them, and these spacer DNAs are regular. So it between each two plus um, CRISPR uh, repeats, there is a DNA spacer. So the CRISPR locus is DNA repeats with spacer DNA in between. So this is what we call the CRISPR locus. Uh, CRISPR, CRISPR repeats are somehow between, it are between uh, 28 and 37 base pairs in length, and the spacer DNA is between 32 and 38 base pairs. Now let's see how does the CRISPR system work. Now let's see. Let, let's say this is the bacterial cell. There is something called the uh, bacteriophages. Bacteriophages are viruses like this. It's a virus, and this virus can infect the bacterial cell. Um, how does the bacteriophage infect the bacterial cell? The bacteriophage invade the bacterial cell it at, it attaches itself on the bacterial surface and then it injects its uh, genome inside the bacterial cell so this is the viral genome now this viral genome uh, will force the cell to produce the viral proteins and the viral enzymes and then it will change the whole cell machinery in the bacterial cell. And this is how the bacteriophage invade or infect the bacterial cell. Now the bacterial cell, because of CRISPR system, can um, like can prevent this to happen a second time. So the CRISPR system is somehow like the adaptive immune system in human. So it's it's a kind of memory. It's a kind of memory to prevent the same bacteriophage from infecting the cell another time. But how does it work? Now, let's take a closer look. CRISPR system is a three, um, the mechanism is a three steps mechanism. The first is the spacer acquisition. I'm going to speak about each step uh, in details. So the first step is uh, spacer acquisition. Then we have the CRISPR RNA processing, and then we have the interference. These are the three steps of the CRISPR system. And you should know that CRISPR system has three types. So there's type one, type two, and type three, depending on the bacterial cell. Okay, so let's start talking about the spacer acquisition. The spacer acquisition, this step is the same in the three different types of CRISPR system. I told you there are three types. So this is the bacterial cell surface. This is the bacteriophage and this is the bacterial genome. Sorry, this is the bacteriophage, this, this is the viral genome. And this is the CRISPR locus. So what's going to happen is that when the bacteriophage infects the cell for for the first time, the bacterial cell chop up the viral genome and take a piece of it and inserts this piece into the DNA, spacer DNA. 
So what you should know is that spacer DNAs is nothing but pieces of different vir viral genomes that have infected the cell previously. So each time a, ba a bacteriophage infects the cell, the cell take a piece of it and insert it into the spacer DNA. What you should also know is that near the CRISPR locus, there are the, the Cas enzyme, the Cas genes, which give the Cas enzymes. The Cas enzymes are many enzymes that are implicated in the, in the CRISPR process. The Cas enzymes in general, I, I, are, are it, most of them are nucleases or helicases. To understand this, you, so, so let's imagine this is a um, this is a DNA sequence. Nucleus can cut the DNA in this way. It cuts the link between the nucleotides. <clears throat> Whereas helicase can cut can um, can cut the hydrogen bonds between the two strands, and then it can separate the two strands of DNA from each other. Most of the Cas enzymes are nucleases and helicases. In the spacer acquisition, we have two main players. We have Cas1 and Cas2. Both of them are dimers that that form uh, that can form a complex together. Cas1 and Cas2 can form a complex together in order to undergo spacer acquisition. As I told you, these three types of CRISPR system, type 1, 2, and 3, um, have the same spacer acquisition step. Cas1 is a nuclease, can be, has nuclease and integrase uh, activity. So it can uh, cut the viral genome and integrate the piece of genome in the spacer DNA, whereas Cas2 is endoribonuclease. So Cas2 can mainly cut RNAs. Um, yeah, some, some bacteriophages have RNA genomes. So this here, this bacteriophage has DNA genome, but other viruses have, have RNA genome. So Cas2 is an endoribonuclease. Now let's go to the second step, which is CRISPR RNA processing. CRRNA is CRISPR RNA processing. Now we have this CRISPR locus, we have different uh, pieces of uh, bacteria of phages genomes in the spacer DNA. What's going to happen now is that one of the two strands of DNA is going to be uh, transcribed, transcribed into messenger RNA. Now, this messenger RNA is exactly com complementary to this strand, and then, yeah, it's complementary to the lower strand. And in this case, we call the lower strand the coding strand because it's the strand that was uh, transcribed to a messenger RNA. Now, this messenger RNA, as I told you, is exactly complementary to the lower strand. So it contains uh, complementary sequences uh, from the CRISPR repeats and the uh, viral genome sequences. Now, here we have three types of three different types of CRISPR RNA processing. In type one, the CRISPR repeats looped, are, are looped like this, they form loops. And then the messenger RNA uh, will be cut using Cas6E or Cas6F enzymes. The messenger RNA, this sequence is going to be chopped up like this. So we will end up with small pieces of RNA in each piece contains the CRISPR um, the CRISPR sequence which forms a loop and the viral uh, the piece of the viral genome as you see this is what we call CRISPR RNAs these small pieces are the CRISPR RNAs this is in type one. In type two, two we have another player in this uh, CRISPR processing. It's called the tracer RNA. There are these pieces of RNA which are bound to the uh, to the CRISPR uh, sequences on the messenger RNA. So this is our, this is called the tracer RNA. Tracer TRA is from transactivating TRA. 
CR is from CRISPR and RNA. These pieces of RNA, as I told you, bind to the uh, CRISPR uh, repeats on the messenger RNA, and then the messenger RNA will be chopped up by Cas9 and another enzyme called RNase3, and we will end up with these pieces of RNA. So in this case, we have the uh, CRISPR repeat, we have the viral, the piece of the viral genome, and the tracer RNA together, and these are the CRISPR RNAs in type two. Type 3 is very uh, simple. So in type 3, Cas9 homolog is going to chop up the messenger RNA directly, and we will end up with the CRISPR RNAs containing the CRISPR repeat and the piece of viral genome. Now let's move to the third step. The third step is the interference, which is also different between the three types of uh, CRISPR systems. Uh, but in general, so there is like a a general thing. In general, the CRISPR RNAs will be integrated with the Cas protein to end up with a complex containing the Cas protein with a piece of RNA inside, which is the CRISPR RNA. This is in general, this is the interference. The interference is between the Cas, a specific Cas protein and the RNA sequence. They are going to, mirror, to be merged together to, to form this complex. Now the differences between the three types, let's go to type 1. In type 1, uh, as I told you, as you remember, if you remember, we have the CRISPR, uh, the CRISPR sequence is looped. Then, um, then what's going to happen is that when the, when the phage, when the bacteriophage infects the cell another time, so as, so as I told you, when the bacteriophage infected the, the cell the first time, this piece was taken from, from this phage. And now when this phage comes another time to infect the cell, this piece of RNA can recognize this piece of DNA because it's complementary. Now, you should know that there is a very, very impor important player in type 1 and type 2, which is this yellow sequence here. It's called the PAM. And PAM means protospacer adjacent motif. What is the PAM? Let's, let me tell you a, a little bit about the PAM because it's important. Scientists have found that when the, like, when the bacterial cell choose a piece of, of the viral genome, to take it, it doesn't take just any piece of the viral genome. It takes a piece of the viral genome which is adjacent to the PAM sequence. So the, the bacterial cell can recognize the PAM sequence and then it takes the adjacent sequence in order to add it into the spacer DNA and then in order to form the CRISPR RNA and the CRISPR complex from it. Why, why the PAM is important? Because the Cas enzyme can recognize the PAM sequence. So here we increase the specificity because not only the, the RNA sequence can recognize the DNA sequence here, but also the Cas enzyme can recognize the PAM sequence here. And in this case, we are increasing the specificity of recognition. PAM is very important in type 1 and type 2, but not in type 3. So what's going to happen here is that the Cas enzyme will recognize the PAM sequence, and then the RNA sequence here is going to recognize the adjacent sequence here, which is exactly complementary to this sequence. So what's going to happen is that the, the uh, viral genome will bind to the RNA like this to the complementary strand because this is complementary to this and then the viral genome will bind the lower strand was copied so the lower strand is complementary to this and then the lower strand will bind to the RNA sequence. Now when this happens now I'm, I'm speaking about type 1 when this binding happens uh, this will activate a cascade of, 
of Cas enzymes. So many Cas enzymes will be activated, and it's it's very com complicated actually. No one exactly knows uh, the process until now. But at the end, this Cas cascade will uh, recruit will recruit Cas three to chop up the viral genome like this. So in type one, Cas3 will chop up the, or, or will cut the viral genome to end up with a degraded, degraded viral genome. So the virus cannot invade the cell anymore. This virus cannot, cannot infect the cell anymore. This is type one. In type two, as I told you, type two is the most important. In type two, the main player is Cas9. So, as I told you before, the PAM sequence is also important in uh, type two because Cas9 enzyme can recognize the PAM sequence, and then this uh, RNA sequence can recognize this DNA sequence, and then they will bind together to form. Like, as I told you, the RNA is complementary to the lower strand, and then they will bind together. And then the Cas enzyme itself will undergo something called the double strand break in the viral genome. And what double strand break means is that the Cas enzyme will break the two strands exactly at the same place. It's called a double strand break. The Cas enzyme has two domains. So this is what we end up with. Uh, the viral genome will be chopped up. The Cas enzyme has two domains called the HNC and the RUVC. They are like RNA's H-like endonuclease domains. And the Cas enzyme can use these two domains in order to go this double strand break. This is type two. Now going to type three, type three is, is very simple. Uh, also, there is a Cas enzyme. Um, there is no PAM here in type 3. So the RNA sequence will recognize it's complementary here on the viral genome, and then they will bind together. And there will be also a cascade of Cas enzymes, like type 1, and then the viral genome will be chopped up like this. Now, if we want to summarize everything we saw, CRISPR system is the three steps system. The first step is spacer acquisition, in which the bacterial cell took a piece of the viral genome, which invades the bacterial cell for the first time, and it, it integrates this sequence into the spacer DNA. So we will have several uh, pieces of different viruses into the spacer DNAs. Then in the CRISPR RNA processing, this strand will be copied to the messenger RNA, and then the messenger RNA will be chopped up to give the CRISPR RNA, which contains uh, complementary to the piece of uh, CRISPR repeat and the piece of viral genome. And in the third step, the interference, this CRISPR RNA will be uh, merged with the Cas enzyme to form this complex. And then when the viral, uh, when the same virus will invade the cell or will try to infect the cell another time, this Cas enzyme and the a piece of RNA will recognize the complementary piece here, and this will cause a chop up in the viral genome. This is everything I wanted to tell you about CRISPR technique, about CRISPR system. This was the end of the part one video. Um, in the part two video, I'm going to speak about the CRISPR Cas9 technique used used in um, in gene silencing, gene engineering. Um, so if you like, you can go and watch part two. Uh, if you like this video, please don't don't forget to uh, like, share, uh, subscribe the channel. Uh, if you have any questions, you can write in the comments. If you have any suggestions for uh, for other uh, topics, you can also write in the comics comments. And see you in the other in the next video. Bye.